I don't take my health for granted. And people say, oh, it's so expensive to be healthy. Yes, it is. But guess what? It's more expensive to be sick. I cannot replace that three and a half years that I lost with my young family. My youngest, I never saw her first steps. I didn't hear her first words. I have no memory of it because I was either in the hospital or on the couch with my goal being open your eyes, open your eyes. And so I don't just want a little bit of magnesium to calm a muscle or calm down a twitch in my eye. I want self-saturation. And the only way that you can achieve cell saturation where every single blood cell is surrounded by magnesium and you are creating a magnesium rich environment instead of a calcium dominant environment is through soaking in magnesium. Do you want to wake up feeling like you are stepping into who you're meant to be into the best possible version of you? What if I told you that the key to your best life, health and happiness are all around you? You just have to find what works for you. I'm Hope Pedraza, and I believe that there isn't just one way to live a healthy and meaningful life, and that all you need is a little inspiration to make changes that last from the inside out. Each week, I'll be sharing tangible tips and inspirational interviews to help you on your journey. These are the steps to take to improve your life and live with purpose. This is Hopeful and Wholesome. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the show. So today I have on Kristen Bowen. Now, a complete health crash led Kristen to creating Living the Good Life Naturally in 2002. Autoimmune issues and a series of failed surgeries left her completely bedridden and depressed with daily seizures. She researched and kind of looked outside of the box for solutions for everything that she was dealing with and discovered that she needed to build a really strong foundation to regain her health. This foundation included food as medicine and the number one building block for optimal health, soaking in magnesium. And this is really what her company, Living the Good Life Naturally, is all about. It's all about transdermal magnesium. Y'all, when I say Kristen has a story to tell, she has a story to tell. Like, I got emotional listening to her talk about it. It is really an incredible story. And she is such an incredible testament to really advocating for yourself and for really just looking into all of the outside of the box ways outside of what, you know, traditional medicine or doctors, or whatever are, you know, doing to really heal the body. And I just, this, just wait for this story. There's so much to go into here, but we're going to talk about her story, the whole, how it all went down and really what exactly is transdermal magnesium. I'm super excited about this episode because it is such an informative episode about transdermal magnesium or just about magnesium in general. But in addition to that, Kristen and I are partnering up with this super exciting magnesium challenge. It's a 30-day challenge that we're doing inside of my Facebook group, Live Wholesome and Healthy, which of course, I'll put the link in the show notes. But we're going to do this challenge for 30 days and five lucky ladies are going to get their magnesium, their transdermal magnesium gifted to them, a lot of with, with some other really good stuff from living the good life naturally. She's going to give a good little goodie basket away to five lucky ladies to do who are doing the challenge. So uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the challenge inside the episode, but you can go ahead and click the link below. Make sure you're in the Facebook group. And then also you can click the link to actually join the challenge so I can get a list of everybody who gets entered to win. Super excited about this, y'all. This is like life-changing stuff. She changed her life with this and she is changing so many other women's lives with this transgenal magnesium. So let's just jump in. This is going to be fun. All right, y'all, let's jump in. I'm here with Kristen and we are talking all things magnesium today. And I'm excited because this is like such a specific topic, but there's so much to be said about it. And Kristen is just a wealth of knowledge here. So I'm excited for her to share all the knowledge today. But thanks so much for joining me today, Kristen. Oh, thanks for having me on to talk all things magnesium. I think I can wrap (laughs) anything around magnesium. (laughs) I love it. I love it. Good, because I want to ask you all the questions of magnesium. So (laughs) ready with the answers. (laughs) Bring it on. Yes. So let me ask you probably one of the most loaded questions of all time. Okay. But what is, why is magnesium so important? So we're recording this in 2022. And I think collectively, as a world, we are more aware in 2022 of how important our vitamin D levels are, right? I mean, like, you don't have to be focused on health and wellness like you and I are for you to have a deeper understanding of 
vitamin D and the role it plays in your immune. And we want strong vitamin D function for strong immune function. Well, I'm over here jumping up and down because guys, guys, you didn't (laughs) drop your vitamin D unless you dropped your magnesium first. Now, I live here in beautiful California in Morro Bay, and there is sunshine all the time. But all my friends, many of my friends around me are vitamin D deficient. Mm -hmm. They're outside in the sun. We're walking the beach. We're hiking the trails. It's because you need magnesium to convert your stored vitamin D into your active vitamin D. And that's what creates a strong immune. We're missing that equation piece. And I just, I'm so grateful to people like you that helped me just come on a podcast so easily so that I can say it's not just vitamin D. (laughs) There are other things. It's like my marriage. I'm good on my own, but oh my goodness, am I better with that man? (laughs) He brings out the best in me. And vitamin D and magnesium are the same way. You need that magnesium to kick you in your active so that you've got a strong immune. So yeah. that's why. Yes, I love it. I love that. Well, and I do think, because I talk about magnesium with my clients, because I mm-hmm. feel like, like you're saying, I feel like the majority of people are deficient, right? There's some level of deficiency in magnesium. And that's my go-to when, you know, when people are constipated and when they're having trouble sleeping, like there's so many things. So can you give people, I guess, some things to look for in themselves? Like what are some signs that you might be magnesium deficient? Oh, okay. So high blood pressure, magnesium deficiency, acid reflux, Mm -hmm. magnesium deficiency, leg cramps at night, magnesium deficiency, reactive in your personality. That's calcium dominance, magnesium deficiency, bone issues, magnesium deficiency, depression, magnesium deficiency, anxiety, magnesium deficiency, weight issues, cortisol issues, magnesium deficiency. Now, I've got to, because I could could go on and on. (laughs) Here's what I want to make sure I don't come across like. And that is, I'm not saying that by soaking in magnesium and achieving cell saturation, that all of those things are going to be automatically healed. I'm saying that all of those things started because you were low in magnesium. So (laughs) this will date me a little bit. (laughs) My sister took me to my first movie and it was Sound of Music. And there's a part in that movie where they sing and I, I won't sing, but they the song goes, let's start at the very beginning. And they're holding their hands on this yes. beautiful hill. Let's start at the very beginning. Well, we need to do that for our health. We need to start where the problem started and every problem, inflammation, anything Hormones, PCOS, autoimmune, infertility, depression, anxiety, all those things, dementia, type three diabetes, type one diabetes, type two, they all started with your magnesium going off. So instead of chasing symptoms, and that's what I did when my health crashed, I chased my thyroid, I chased my weight, I chased my depression, I chased it, and it was exhausting and it cost my family major financial investments. Mm -hmm. And so let's start where the problem started and build a strong foundation. It's mentally easier. It's financially cheaper. It's not nearly as tiring and you get results faster Yeah, because I don't want to spend my whole life focused on being, on getting healthy. I'm getting healthy to spend my whole life connecting and loving on grandbabies and my kids Mm -hmm. and doing those things that light me up. So I want to start where the problem started and it is magnesium. Yeah. So what are the, some of the first steps that people can take if they want to, they want to increase. So is, is your recommendation, like, do you start with food? Do you start with supplements? Like what is your first recommendation for people? So one of my philosophies that I learned when my health crashed um, 20 years ago and put me on this beautiful journey was that we need to be current with what's happening at the time. Mm -hmm. So for example, my grandparents did not have a magnesium deficiency in their diet. They could go to their food and they could get the magnesium that they needed. And so we cannot take our parents or our grandparents approach to fixing the chronic, massive, extensive 
magnesium deficiency that we have now. Mm -hmm. And so I would love, because I am such a let food be thy medicine Mm -hmm. person. It's powerful, so powerful. We've got a problem in the United States, and that is that we've overused synthetic fertilizers. Mm -hmm. And because of that, the magnesium in the soil is there, but it's bound up and the plant can't uptake it. So for example, my grandparents could have gone to the store and bought a traditional red pepper, didn't even need to be organic, and it would have their day's worth of magnesium. Wow. We go to the store now, it doesn't even have trace amounts in an organic red bell pepper. That's insane. And so I want to say, oh, turn to food. Now, there are foods, there are foods that have magnesium in them. Creo brew is a favorite. Pumpkin seeds is a favorite. Dark green leafies are a favorite. But I want, you know, when I got so sick and we lost everything, our home, three and a half years, Mm. um, we just lost so much. I don't take my health for granted. And people say, oh, it's so expensive to be healthy. Right. Yes, it is. But guess what? It's more expensive to be sick. Totally. I cannot replace that three and a half years that I lost with my young family. My youngest, I never saw her first steps. I didn't hear Mm. her first words. I have no memory of it because I was either in the hospital or on the couch Mm. with my goal being open your eyes, Mm -hmm. open your eyes. Mm -hmm. And so I don't just want a little bit of magnesium to calm a muscle or calm down a twitch in my eye. I want self-saturation. And the only way that you can achieve cell saturation where every single blood cell is surrounded by magnesium and you are creating magnesium, magnesium rich environment instead of a calcium dominant environment is through soaking Mm -hmm. in magnesium. Mm -hmm. And so that's my passion. Let's get the foundation built strongly. Let's start where the problem started and let's soak in magnesium. Let's build that strong foundation and then let's evaluate, okay, now that we're at cell saturation, now what have we got going on that we need to deal with? Right, right. So I want to back up before I get, because I want to ask you more about the the soaking, but I love what you said, because I think it's an important point to drive home because you hear that a lot. And I've had conversations with people where, well, my my parents never had to deal with this and Mm -hmm. our parents ate blah, 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 and they turned out fine. And our parents, and, and I think you made such a great point. And I try to explain this to people because a lot of people are, you know, and, and part of what I do as a functional nutritionist, I, there is always a supplement protocol to, you know, correspond to the healing process that right. my clients right. are under. So there's always these supplements that help support the function of the cells and the body and all that. And there are still a lot of people who are very resistant or hesitant. You ask a lot of medical doctors and they still talk about how it just makes for expensive tea. And I think it's such an important point that you made where it's like, we are literally, the food is completely different than back in the day, the soil we grow it in. And I had on my podcast at the very beginning, Kiss the Ground, it's an organization that promotes regenerative farming to talk about exactly that. Like there is a problem in this country with the quality of the soil we're, we're growing the food in. So I love that you brought that point up because I think it's an important point to make before we talk more about the magnesium. That That's the whole thing. That's the reason why so many of us are deficient in so many micronutrients. Well, and I think you said something that I think is really important that we talk about. And that is every protocol has a supplement strategy that mm-hmm. goes along with it. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes we forget that supplements are supplemental. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. They are supplemental. And I think because we all have many plates that we hold that are spinning and we want it easy and Mm -hmm. we want it just, oh, give me the supplement. Just give me the pill. Mm -hmm. I went from going to the doctor and saying, okay, give me the medicine to hopping into the natural health and wellness space saying, oh, give me the supplement. Yep. When in actuality, I need to take more responsibility and accountability for how I'm sleeping, mm-hmm. how my hydration is, yep. how is my breath? Yep. Am I oxygenating my mm-hmm. body? And so it's not just magnesium as a supplement, it's magnesium as a mindset. Right. How are you breathing? The choices that you and I are making during this podcast 
are affecting the flow of our minerals. As that cortisol goes up, that mineral will get pushed out. Mm -hmm. If we're stressed out, if we're acting incongruent, like for example, if I get on and I'm acting all one way, but I'm really another way, that's confusing for our body and spikes our cortisol. And so when that cortisol goes up, again, we lose magnesium. And so it's not just about soaking in magnesium and achieving cell saturation. It's about living authentically Mm -hmm. and living and thinking about the words that you're saying when you're online. Would I say that in person? Would I say that to that person's face? Well, if I wouldn't say it to their face, I probably shouldn't say it online. And so just about showing up as the best version of you, because when you do that, when you're aligned like that, your body functions better. We determine we are so powerful. We determine how the minerals flow in our body by the choices that we make. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. I love that. Well, and I think, you know, you bringing up, cause there's, there's so many things, so many layers to that and bringing up the, you know, the relationship between cortisol and your magne- uh, your uh, mineral levels, but understanding, like you're saying, like people just think about cortisol in terms of like, like there's so many things that affect your cortisol levels, I think is the important part I want to bring up. And I think right. that's the thing, you know, like you're saying, when you're being authentically you and you're, you're being mindful about your words, all of these things affect what goes on inside your body. So I think that that's the other connection I want to make is every decision you make, the things you decide to say or don't say, the communication with other people, all those things affect your cortisol levels and what's going on in your body with your minerals. So I love that. Another thing is the ability that we have to just be. I think mm-hmm. sometimes we get caught in doing, doing, mm-hmm. doing, doing. Yep. And this morning I was, I do a walk with me series on the beach and we talked about good girl energy mm. and so many women are caught in good girl energy and they are trying to prove that they have enough value that they're worthy of getting better. And you don't have to prove anything. Your value stays the same. Yep. And so stepping out of that good girl energy and recognizing it doesn't matter if I finished all of the things on my list today that I'm supposed to do Mm -hmm. to be healthy, Mm -hmm. because a lot of times we're doing that list to prove our worth. Right. And so I needed, I had broken patterns and broken thinking patterns and soaking in the magnesium actually helped me start to see them Mm -hmm. because I became a less reactive person. Mm -hmm. And it gave me this longer window in my brain to look and learn and evaluate and make those small shifts that really add up to big things. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So when you're talking about soaking, Mm -hmm. can you explain what that is? People like, are you talking about just soaking in Epsom salt? Are you taught, how do you recommend people do the soaking? I'm so glad you brought up Epsom (laughs) salt. I think If I had a nickel for every time I had typed this online, I could put three of my grandkids through school. (laughs) So this is a very common question about the Epsom salt. So Epsom salts are great and they are magnesium. But again, looking through my filter of what I want and what my goals are, which I think is so important that every person determines what theirs are, because yours might be different than mine. My goal is cell saturation. Epsom salts cannot get you there. Mm. There is not enough magnesium. It takes 400 cups of Epsom salts to equal a quarter cup of the magnesium that I soak in. Oh my gosh. That's and crazy. so now we know how good Epsom salts are at relaxing our muscles right. and you feel so nice. Right. And that's great. I want more. Mm-hmm. I want cell saturation. Now, The magnesium I soak in does not have sulfates and the sulfates in the Epsom salts are really good for liver function. Mm -hmm. And so I will throw Epsom salts in with the other magnesium, but my goal is cell saturation. And I'm not throwing those Epsom salts in for a different type of magnesium. I'm just taking the sulfates. Mm. And so it all depends on your filter and your goals. Right. And my goal is cell saturation. Right. I am someone that depression has been a part of my experience since I was a young child. It affected my children. I had one that coined it dark hole depression. Mm-hmm. You know, so it wasn't just a little teary. It, it really 
took away my ability to function at the level that I wanted to. And it's not that magnesium has healed my depression. That is still a part of my journey. But I do know that when I'm at cell saturation, the glutamate activity in my brain has been shown by testing to be better. And that helps depression. Anyway, so Epsom salts are good, but not for what my goals are. It's like my sister and I, we look very similar. We look so similar. That woman can take apart an engine and put it back together. (laughs) Cannot do that. (laughs) Not in my wheelhouse. We have different strengths. Mm -hmm. And so I'm using the magnesium for the strength of achieving cell saturation. I got you. I got you. So with the salt the, or the salts, the magnesium that you're soaking in, what is mm-hmm. this, like what form of magnesium and where is somebody getting this magnesium that you're okay. soaking in? So it's so important where it's coming from. Mm-hmm. So it's magnesium chloride okay. and you can buy it very inexpensively produced in a lab. Synthetic magnesium does not move your red blood cell number. And again, that filter I want 6.3 on my magnesium red blood cell test. Mm. Synthetic does not have the cofactors and the ability to move your red blood cell number. And you could get it from Utah, which would be super easy because that's where my warehouse is at. Mm. You can get it from Russia, but they're very high in heavy metals. Mm, I see. I am not willing. I've been there. I've done that. I crashed my immune with some heavy metal issues. It's not hard to do. I am not willing Mm -hmm. to get to cell saturation and increase heavy metals in my body. Yeah, what's the point? (laughs) So currently, the cleanest place to get it is from the Zextine Sea in the Netherlands. It's an ocean sea brine, and we have it independently tested. We don't just take their... I've been burned too many times. Mm -hmm. So we don't just take their little paper that they send to us. Every batch that we have comes in and is independently tested so that I know that it's still currently the best place to get magnesium. And then the other thing you have to watch for is the way the FDA has written the laws, they don't have to tell you if they're adding more water. Of course And adding more (laughs) water increases profit value. Mm -hmm. Now, I am a business. At the end of the year, my accountant has to, there has to be a profit there so that I can make payroll, I can pay warehouse space, but it's not what drives me every day. Mm -hmm. And so the magnesium that you're soaking in, you want at a minimum 31% saturation level. Now, usually mine will come in anywhere from 32 to 38. It's a natural product. So it varies in nature. It's not exactly the same, but it will never be accepted into my warehouse if it's below 31% elemental saturation. Okay. Wow. I mean, that's so great to know how much intention and attention goes into like the quality and everything. That's, that's amazing. And the beautiful thing for me is I've had a couple of kids join me in this company that kind of self-started itself living the good life naturally mm-hmm. 20 years ago. And so I have a daughter who's in charge of her team and processes at the warehouse. And so our families promise to every client and friend that purchases magnesium is that you get the good stuff because yeah. that's what helps people get better. Yeah. And that's what our company was founded on was helping Love people that. get better. That's amazing. So when you're soaking in it, is this like something like you're putting in your bathtub and you're soaking for a certain amount of time? Yeah. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm a huge, my husband calls it stacking of functions. He is a permaculturist to the core. Mm-hmm. And so he calls it stacking of functions. I want things efficient. Mm -hmm. I want to get that done and I want to be outside doing things. Yes. And so I wanted to know how long do I have to soak for optimal benefit? Right. I don't want to be soaking for an hour if I can do it in eight minutes. And so we have done so many studies. We've done thermal imaging. We've tested thousands of women's red blood cells to see okay, this group soaked for 30 minutes was the percentage the same of how they achieve cell saturation in the two groups and this one group soaked for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So over the last 20 years, I've just been this little geek finding all the things and putting it together. And here's what I've learned. And that is in 20 minutes with thermal image testing, 
you will uptake approximately, it will vary a percentage or two depending on your body, but approximately 80% of the magnesium in 20 minutes. Wow. In 45 minutes, you will uptake 98% of the magnesium. Oh, wow, that's now, crazy. I don't know about your family, but in my family, they did not come along this healthy wellness journey mm-hmm. as willingly as I wish they would have. Yeah. <laughs> Some of them fought pretty hard. What? Yes, Where yes. did those Oreos go? <laughs> and so I was the one who was paying for all the magnesium. Mm-hmm. And I said to them, if you don't have 20 minutes, don't waste it. Right. Minimum of 20 minute time yeah. investment. Yeah. And then I'm a bath girl. I love a, a candle, a bath. I, I love all of that. <laughs> I had teenage boys that yeah, not wanted so much. Yeah. nothing yeah. to do, yeah. <laughs> but they did want muscle recovery from mm. their sports, mm-hmm. which magnesium is so important for that. Yes. And so we started testing soaking in a bowl and soaking in the bathtub. And guess what we found? No difference. Your feet are what uptake your magnesium. Wow. In fact, I had a group of women. I put the call out on social media and I said, if you have soaked in magnesium, done the 30 day challenge, and you have not achieved cell saturation, reach out to me. I want to work with you. Yeah. And so we brought this group of women together that were stuck. They couldn't get their numbers to move. And my husband had had an experience that really helped me understand them. He's had below the knee double amputation. He had a vein genetic disorder. We had a really hard time after amputation. And after surgery, the anesthesia drops your magnesium Mm -hmm. levels. Mm -hmm. So anytime after surgery, we redo a 30-day challenge to get our magnesium levels up. We couldn't get his up. And the doctor made a comment and said, oh, it's because your feet act as a pump for your lymph system. Oh, and his feet wow. were gone. So that went ding, ding, ding in my head. Okay, I'm working with all these women. We had just been talking and I know the majority of them are soaking in the bath. And I know when I'm in the bath, what do I do? Get your I feet propped up. <laughs> my feet up. So I sent a text out to everybody. And I said, oh my gosh, hop on Zoom right now. I've got to talk to you. <laughs> that was the problem. They were popping their feet feet up in the bathtub. So if you love to take a bath, take a bath with magnesium. Mm -hmm. Keep your feet feet. in the water. (laughs) So then is what we did. There was 38 women who hopped on that call with me that night. And they said, okay, let's redo the 30-day challenge. Keep your feet in the water. I'll pay to have it retested. I want to know. All of them achieve self saturation. Wow, so that's crazy. It's your feet that act as a pump. Yes. And so make it efficient. Sometimes when I'm prepping for a class, I've got my little bowl of water at my desk yeah, and I'm soaking yeah. magnesium Easy. because we're yeah. all busy. Yeah. You right. just have to make it work in your life. Yeah. Now, my sweet mom, who's 87, she doesn't like to carry that bowl anymore. Mm-hmm. It's starting to get hard for her to carry mm-hmm. that bowl of water. And so she's back to doing it in her bathtub again. Yeah. Make it work for you in the season of life that you're in. That is completely fascinating to me. Isn't that though? <laughs> yes. That though? Yes. Yeah, it's taken me a long time oh to like, gosh. you know, 20 years of like tracking and yes. Excel sheets that turn to Google sheets. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh my gosh. That's so crazy. So I do want you to share a little bit about kind of where how you got here because you, you, you touched on it a little bit, how, you know, you dealt with depression. And so can you talk a little bit about, I guess, your journey to get here and and to kind of discovering all of this and creating this company? So I'd had my last baby and I was really excited when the doctor cleared me to exercise because exercise plays such a role for me in lifting my mood and the depression. It's almost like I can feel it on the Mm -hmm. perimeter and Mm -hmm. it's coming in like Mm -hmm. this and I could Mm -hmm. feel it. And I really wanted to get back to some more movement. And so I started and I was like, oh, this is not working for me. I'm peeing my pants. Mm -hmm. And what is happening? So I called the doctor and I said, okay, you cleared me, but I cough. I laugh really hard. I walk too fast and I'm wetting myself. And he said, oh, your bladder's fallen. You need Mm -hmm. to come in. Let's look at it. I went in, bladder had fallen. So I went in for a bladder Mm tie-up. On the table of that bladder tie-up, I coded numerous times. Wow. 
And here's what happened. Now, it took us years to put the puzzle pieces together Mm -hmm. for what had happened, but here's what happened as shortly as possible. (laughs) So I went in with a known autoimmune. I had celiac. Mm -hmm. Titanium was used as screws to, they screwed that into my pelvic bone Mm -hmm. and then they took a cadaver graft and made like a little hammock. And then they put my bladder into that little hammock. Two things happened. Titanium is not inert. At the time, they thought that it was and that no one had allergic reactions to titanium. Now we know there's a small percentage of the population with Melissa syndrome. I have oh, Melissa syndrome. Wow. I was allergic to the titanium oh screws. Gosh. So my body was reacting. And oh then God. at the time, we were living in Arizona and the growth was just exploding. And it's a town that a lot in Mesa, a lot of people retire Mm -hmm. and the medical community could not keep up with the explosion of growth. My cadaver graft was bought off market and it had black mold. And so the combination of the black mold and the allergic reaction just flatlined me. I got down to 70 pounds. I couldn't drink water. I couldn't eat food. I had a feeding tube. I was having seizures every day. I was a mess. I was an absolute mess. Now, at the time, I was insulated. I was so out of it. I didn't know how out of it I was. Right, right. But my young family and my husband Mm. were very much impacted Mm. by just me not being present. Mm -hmm. That, you know, when presence is such a buzzword, like Mm -hmm. be present. Mm -hmm. It's not a buzzword for me. Sorry. Yeah, it's not a okay. best word for me because I wasn't present and I can't replace those memories with my kids, with my babies. I, they're forever gone for me. And so it was through the process of my husband actually taking a leave of absence and he just had the philosophy, something happened on that table. Mm-hmm. Um, I ended up in the hospital for weeks and then they'd send me home and then it would start again and I'd go back into the hospital and it was just a mess. And he just kept saying something happened on the table. Yeah, she struggled with depression. Yes, she had celiac, but she was functioning. Right, right. And now she can't walk. She can't eat. She's hooked to a catheter and she's got a feeding tube. Something happened on the table. And in his mind, he thought, you know, and you've heard of stories where, you know, did they leave a sponge in? Right, right, (laughs) right, right. right. Mm -hmm. Did they leave something in? So he just took me from Mayo Clinic to Stanford, doctor to doctor. He just took a leave a year off of work and he just drove me to anyone who would listen that he thought could maybe help me. And we couldn't put it together. And then at the end of that year, at that point, we were okay financially, but we needed income mm-hmm. and because we were having to buy back our insurance also. Mm-hmm. And so um, he had to go back to work. And because of the economy and what had happened, they had to transfer us to give us a job. So we had to move. And so they had to actually life flight me to the new house so that I could make it because I couldn't travel that long. And he, I mean, imagine where he's coming from. He's got young children in the home and a wife that's non-functional. Now we're out of money and he's driving and he turns the radio on and he hears this physician's assistant talking on this local talk radio show of this new town that we're in. And he's like, oh. He thinks outside of the box Mm. because the people in the Western community are amazing. They recognize themselves. They're working within a broken system. Mm. I never want to disparage the people in the system. The system itself is broken. Mm -hmm. And he had been shut down and not listened to when, you know, the symptoms got weirder and weirder. And he thought, this guy thinks outside of the box. I'm going to call him. And so we called him and he answered the phone and they talked. And the physician's assistant said, you know what? I don't know what, but I know how to study. And this is like a puzzle to me. Mm -hmm. And let's put the pieces together. We're so grateful to him. That physician's assistant who was willing to think outside of the box and who recognized you might not have heard of these symptoms before, but it's really happening. Mm -hmm. And he was the one who put it together and said, are you willing to take her back under anesthesia right, again, right. take the titanium out. I have no idea if it will work though. And at that point, I because he had almost lost me on the table three and a half years previous, he felt like he needed to bring my mom in 
and have her help make that decision. Yeah. And the two of them decided at that point, my quality of life was so was non-existent. Mm-hmm. I wasn't aware that it was non-existent, but it right. was, right. and it was just getting worse, right. that it was time and it was worth the risk. Mm-hmm. And coming out of that surgery, not that everything was better, but I could remember who I was. Wow. And I know I didn't know it was a difference, but my husband was just sobbing. On mm-hmm. that. He was just sobbing mm-hmm. because I talked to him and I hadn't been talking to him right. for three and a half years. And so then I was at this point that I had to figure out what to do. I was at 72 pounds. I lost my eyebrows, most of my my hair, you know, I seizures. And so we had to start putting those puzzle pieces back together. And when you're desperate like that, (laughs) and we were very desperate at that point, financially, Mm -hmm. mentally, emotionally, spiritually, we were just, it had hit us on every level. You'll try anything. Yeah. Because I was raised in a very Western medical Mm -hmm. home that you did what the doctor said, right, right. but I did, and it wasn't working. Right. Mm-hmm. And so that's where we heard about soaking in magnesium and that it helped with anxiety mm. because at that point I'd never had anxiety before. And oh my goodness, like I was having mass anxiety. I hadn't been interacting with people. Right. And so like, what do I say? How do I, yeah. like, oh my gosh, you know, what do they think of me? My hair, my body looks so emaciated, but it's interesting. So many women would say, oh, but at least you're skinny. And that Ooh. really helped me because wow. I had some body dysmorphia mm-hmm. issues and did diets to lose 10 pounds. Sure. And it really helped me recognize it has nothing to do. Wow. It's about help. It's about being present with my children Mm -hmm. and my husband. Mm -hmm. It's about being deeply connected Mm -hmm. to the people that I love. It's not about 10 pounds. And so all of those things that happened really helped to form those principles that I live by and and that I have the opportunity and privilege of sharing with other women. Yeah. What a journey. Holy cow. And to listen to you tell that and how the pieces all fell into place. Like, I mean, it's, it was all divinely orchestrated. Like the fact that your husband heard it on the radio and that like, Oh my gosh, like the puzzle pieces just, that's crazy. Oh, and I, can I, can I like brag on my kids for just a little bit? So the oldest was, we had just adopted children from foster care, older children and integrated them into our home right before the crash, which added a whole nother level of heart. And I was really suicidal when I came back to, because at that point I saw the devastation, I saw the chaos and just thought, what have I done? How do we recover from this? And I was feeling really low one night and I reached out to my kids and I said, you know what, this whole mess, all the things you missed, you know, all of them ended up having to stop lessons and Mm. pursuing things, you know, that you support your kids in doing. And And it was so interesting. Each of my kids responded. I have a daughter who's a chef and she said, mom, I learned how to cook for my siblings when the cupboards had very little in it. I had to get creative. Oh my And that's where my passion of cooking and nourishing and bringing people together, because I saw when I did that, they were happier. Mm. And that food became common salady, not just slap it on a table. And that's her passion. Now I have my oldest son who, who is a financial investor and his specialty is working with families that someone has worked very hard, created a business and sold it for millions and millions of dollars. And it will affect the generations down and teaching them how to set that up in a way that kids are still being raised as Mm -hmm. great people and Mm -hmm. not trust fund babies. Mm -hmm. And And he said, mom, I stepped in and I helped dad with the finances because he would come home from work. And he walked in one day and he said he was laying over the bills, just sobbing. And he said, I, my passion came from, I had a gift to do that. I helped dad. And so the really beautiful thing is that my kids now have taken that mess Mm. and my family will say, oh, you didn't create it. I still feel like I did. Mm-hmm. It was I was the one who crashed. Yeah. 
but they've been able to turn it into their greatest oh gift. My gosh. So right now, if there is someone who's out there and you're so frustrated and you just don't see the light and you feel like, oh my gosh, I just can't push on. I'm begging you push on mm. because you can take those hard things and the depth of the hard equals the joy and the beauty and the mm. light that you can tap into and create with. And as I watch my children thriving now, not that I want to relive it. I don't want to go back through it. It was mm. awful. I don't want to romanticize mm. it. There are beautiful things that came from those ashes. Absolutely. Absolutely. What a testament, like oh, you're making me get emotional talking about it. What a testament to like, just, well, first of all, your strength that you were able, even though, you know, you didn't, you weren't completely aware of what was going on, like for that period of time, but for your strength to get through it, first of all, for your husband's strength to like mm-hmm. stop at no cost to figure out what was no cost. going on with you. Like that that's a huge testament. was my advocate. Oh my gosh. Yes. I mean, is. what we can only, all of us listening can only pray that you know, we have partners that are, I mean, that's incredible, but to see, like, I love, I love hearing stories like this where all the pieces just fit. And there's all of this beauty, like you said, the beauty that came from the ashes, right? Like, I mean, that's just what an incredible story. And of all the the mess and the hardships, and that was how your, your kids learned their passion. Like Mm -hmm. that's what an incredible story. It is. They tapped into it. And I think right now we have so many people that are just not feeling good. Mm. You know, they're trying to recover and, and their recoveries, they're relapsing and they're just exhausted. And there are lessons being taught Mm -hmm. through that process. Now, I don't mean to minimize the process. It's hard and it's heavy and it's lonely sometimes. And it's frustrating. There is a learning within that though, that can be profoundly life-changing. I love I never dreamed that I had a passion of creating jobs that people Mm -hmm. love to come to. That's a passion I didn't know I had. And the team that we have now is, they're just my favorite people. And to create a place that they come to that is, doesn't have stress and to Mm -hmm. give them the freedom with their time, with their families, and they love their jobs. And we find their areas of genius that they can work in within the company I didn't know I had that passion. Mm -hmm. I I didn't Mm -hmm. even know that was in me. And I don't think I would have discovered it if it wouldn't have been for that. Yeah, 100%. All the pieces just fell into the right place at the right time. Like, oh my gosh, what a huge. And, you know, it's, and like you say, don't want to minimize it, but looking at it now as as a blessing, like all the blessings that came out of it, I guess, not the the actual situation, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh my gosh. And, and I do want to, I do want you to, I want you to put a plug in because I want, of course, I'll put all this in the show notes, but I want you to put a plug in for your company and what you do with Mm -hmm. the magnesium. So can you just tell people like what it's called and just tell a little bit about your company? So um, the company kind of started itself, you know, when I started coming back and there was such incredible deep shame for what I'd done, especially to my children, people started asking me what, you know, like, oh, how'd you do this? What'd you do Mm -hmm. this? And so I started answering them and the company started organically. And in the beginning, it was built on a very broken base because as what happened was I was getting accolades. I was getting praise. I was helping them because when I looked at my kids, it was heartbreaking. Mm. And so that filled this hole. I didn't realize until looking back that it filled this hole. And so we were able to go back and create a strong foundation, not only in my body, but for the company too, and clean up those patterns. And so the company kind of started itself. And then my husband was like, okay, you've got to bring some order to this. And so it's called living the good life naturally. And I teach classes and I do walk with me series. And I have my passion of magnesium that we import and sell because I want to be in charge of the supply chain. We made a decision a year ago, supply chains got really hard with COVID and all the problems, you know, everyone's having a hard time with that. And I was so grateful for the core values that the company had because we did not go to a cheaper supply source because our core value is helping people create help. And so we stuck with our supply source and ran out for a little while. We didn't just put something on the shelf just to sell it. 
And my promise is that magnesium is the best, the cleanest that is currently available. They can go online at livingthegoodlifenaturally.com. And we have a 32 ounce bottle. They'll need two of those to do the 30 day challenge. And it's everything I talk about, everything I focus on within the company. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I think my next, I have a Facebook group and I think my next thing is going to tell people we're going to do this 30 day challenge together because I think this is going to be so so good. It's so fun. It's so fun to do it as a group Yes, because then you can share experiences. In fact, if you want, and only if you want, after you've had a group of people soaking in it, the questions that come up will be completely different. I would love to do another podcast and we can just deep dive if this happened, what did this mean? Yeah. If this happened, do this. If this happened, try this. Yeah. And we can just dive deep on how to course correct because one thing I've learned is magnesium shines the light on what needs to be healed mm. in the body. But if you don't understand that, right. you'll think, oh, that magnesium did this. No, it's telling you your potassium's mm-hmm. low. You've got to get your potassium mm-hmm. up or it's telling you your omega threes. So I would love to do that. Yes. If that's a good fit for you. Yes. I think that sounds amazing. We're doing it. I got to plan the challenge yeah. and we're doing it together. I love this. Now I'm excited. Oh my gosh. This is so great. So let's see. I have one more question okay. I like to ask everybody before I finish. But before you do that, you already gave all of your the website information, but is there, are you active on social media? Are there other yeah, avenues I that am. people can kind of tri- follow along and learn? So I do. When I stream, I stream it on Facebook and YouTube. Perfect. And I do a walk with me series and there it's the foundation of everything I do. And they're there right now. You can just go watch those. I'm currently doing one as we're recording this podcast. And I'm also, I have a newsletter that they can join. And I also am on Instagram. So I I show up pretty much daily, Monday through Friday on social media. Perfect. I love it. Perfect. And of course, I'll put all that in the show notes so y'all can awesome. go. And of course, make sure I'm totally doing this. I'm just going to plan it. And then me and Kristen are going to figure out another episode, but make sure you join the Facebook group because we're going to do a 30 day challenge because I am excited about it. So we're going to yeah, do that next. It's, it's so fun to do it with a group of people. Yes. Together. There's yes. a real synergy. That yeah, happens. totally. We're doing it. Okay. The last question I have to ask you that okay. I'd like to ask everybody is what is the most important thing you can do to live with purpose? To live with purpose, to know what your purpose is. Why are you doing it? I think we need to define it more strongly. It's not just, I want to get healthy. Why do you want to be healthy? For me, I want to be healthy so I can climb trees, so I can kneel on the ground and play cars on that, the little matchbox cars. (laughs) And so that my body can be mobile to run through parks. That's why I want to be healthy. And Because I have that why, I've spent the time thinking about that, writing it out. Because I have that, the decisions that I make have more purpose behind them because I know what's fueling it. Mm -hmm. And so if you'll just take an hour and just think, why? Why do I want to be healthy? Why am I ultimately doing this? I think sometimes we can, oh, it's to get out of pain or, oh, it's to do this. Go deeper. Ask why again. Ask why again so that you can really get to those core reasons of why you want to be doing what you're doing. And when you can articulate that to someone, when you can clearly say to someone, this is why I do what I do, you don't have to strive to find purpose. It happens. Mm -hmm. I love that. Such a great answer. Kristen, you have been so informative, enlightening, inspiring. I don't know what other words I could use. Thank you so much for this episode. Like this has been like, I feel like this has been one of the most important conversations we've had on this this show. So I just thank you. Thank you that I am so grateful to people like you. I don't think your listeners realize or understand if they haven't done a podcast, how much work it is. (laughs) When I left the radio show, I did radio for seven years. I thought, oh, I'll do a podcast. Oh, I think I did three. <laughs> Maybe there's four. <laughs> it is so much work, editing, scheduling. And I'm so grateful to people like you that do all of that work. And then you just invite me on and I get to talk and meet <laughs> beautiful people and, and have sweet connections. And so thank you yes. for the editing and all of the things that you do. 
to continue to put that podcast up so that we can connect with people because that's what it's about is connection. Totally. Totally. I agree. Thank you. You're so sweet. And that is, I mean, that is what it's about. It's the connections and yeah, yeah, I love it. Thank you so much, Kristen. Thanks. Thanks for listening to Hopeful and Wholesome, y'all. If you found value in this week's episode, please subscribe on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast and leave a review to let me know what you thought. I love to know what you find useful in these episodes so I know how I can provide the most value I can to my listeners. And if you have topics that you want to know more about, I'd love to hear those as well. So shoot me a message on Instagram, Facebook, or LinkedIn. It's at the Hope Pedraza or visit my website, hopefulandwholesome.com. Thanks, y'all. Thank you.